Caleb Bryce, congratulations on the win. Thank you, my man. Thank, thank you. What do you think was the difference today? Played all 40 minutes. Never gave up. Yeah. Uh, like the last time we played the man, we just dumped that man tank. Um, have medic and Reeves under control, and then just communicated down the stretch. Was it particularly challenging playing the two games in quick, rapid succession like this? Yeah, it was. Um, it was. It was. I say it was complicated and real simple, like. You, you knew what players were going to do what, and we just made, had to make, both teams had to make adjustments. Uh, Reeves, we tried to keep him out of the paint. He still got in the paint. He's a good player, but we still finished it strong. We bound the ball together. And you, we just, we just do mentally, they was going to come in here wanting to get back that, get back to win, bro. get back at us, because we beat them at their crib two nights prior. So, you know, it's just, it's just one of the things like you just got to stay motivated and keep it on mind. I mean, it's just a big turnaround. Like you said, we know what they can do. We literally played them like 48 hours ago. So it was not that long. All right. Members of the media, if you have questions for Oklahoma State's Bryce Williams or Kayla Boone, please click raise hand. We'll try and get to everybody. Our first question is going to come from Jacob Unruh from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Jacob. Bryce, I'm going to start with the obvious. Uh, you got the crowd chanting, come back for one more year. Um, what do you think when you hear that? And uh, any any more thoughts on that? I know you were tweeting about it last night. So any more thoughts on that? Um, is I, I just haven't made up my mind yet. You know, it'd be great to come back, you know, but I still I still dislike school a lot. <laughs> so it's like, um, I, I'll probably make up my mind during March Madness or maybe after. Yes, sir. <laughs> what do you think when the fans chant that, though? It's love, nothing but love. You, you can't not like that. I love it. Uh, it's, I'm grateful for it and blessed. And and to the actual game here, you you defended Austin Reeves really well tonight. Um, kind of walk me through that battle. You had him frustrated at times. Um, and and what you did so well. Um, last game, we were kind of chit-chatting a lot, you know, going back and forth. So it, just, it really just carried over to this game. I wanted to take the assignment. We had Avery on him at the beginning of the last game. In this game, I just want to uh, take on the challenge and accept the challenge and uh, try to guard him 94 feet and uh, just make everything tough for him, make catches, make uh, drives, shots, everything tough, you know? But he's a, he's a smart player. He knows how to get fouled. He, he's smart. So I just I just had to play all 40 minutes, not 39, not 38, all 40. And you had an 8-0 run or you scored eight straight points today. You scored eight straight points the other day, helped race a nine-point deficit. Um, and those moments, kind of what what triggers that for you? Because I know at times you struggled offensively the last few weeks, but to get going like that, how big is that? And what triggers that? Um, I think what triggers is when one shot goes in, I feel like the rest are about to go in. You know, I had slumps where if I missed, my confidence went down, so I'm not shooting at all. But if one shot goes in, I feel like I can hit the rest, like, easily. Yes, sir. And, Caleb, you... You had a big day today too. Kind of, kind of walk me through the adjustments you made after uh, Saturday. Uh, be more aggressive from the jump. Yesterday, uh, when we played them in Norman, I like I had the first play rare for me, and then after that, I didn't touch ball for like probably five, six minutes straight. And it's like for me, it's really not scoring, but like that Norman game, I didn't run the floor hard really. I didn't really set good screens, and today I feel like I, I ran a lot better. Uh, I, my screens were a little bit better. They could have been like, I still got caught on some illegal screens. But it was just honestly just doing little things in my mind, just being aggressive and being energetic from the start. And for either one of you, uh, last one from me for now, uh, Kate scored 40 on Saturday. They obviously threw the kitchen sink at him today. Um, how did you guys adjust to that? How did he adjust to that? Um, it just shows that he, he's a great player, not, not, not to take nothing from my guy, but we're, we're a great team at the end of the day. Like, we, we have all the pieces. We have all the playmakers. We have all the finishers, all the shooters. I feel like we could play with whoever. Um, but Kay just takes the pressure off the rest of us. You know, he, he has so much pressure on him. It's not really pressure to him. He can handle the situations. 
but he has a team around him that, that can back him up every day. Awesome. Thanks, fellas. Yes, sir. Our next question comes from Marshall Scott from Pistols Firing. Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, um, this first was for Bryce. As as a guy who's just experienced Bedlam for the first time, are these the two most intense games that you think you've played in? Um, I say yeah. It's it's a rivalry, so the fans. We was in warm ups, and the fans was trying to fight each other to get into the seats. So it's like yeah, it's most intense from the jump all the way to the end. They're booing. They're they're mad. They're happy. They got everything. It's, it's nothing but happiness this way. You know, last year it was crazy. And, and then Caleb, for you, what does it feel like to be able to experience sweeping a team that's in your home state that didn't offer you all, all those emotions? Well, it feels it feels really good, man. Like honestly, last year didn't have the opportunity, but like I remember last year when we when we beat him here and I subbed out, Coach Mike hugged me. He was like, "We're not gonna lose to them again." So sweeping them this year just gives me more motivation to when we see them the next time we play them, and then next year. If I'm blessed, if we're blessed to sweep him again. And then Caleb, your brother got a, an increased role today. He played a little bit of the five, I think, at times. Just kind of was it nice to see him also get involved in a, in a rivalry game like this? Oh, it was always great because Coach Mike knows like this game was really important to, to everybody and uh, OSU community, but like to really like cross Oklahoma kids that are from here. He knows like how they like how they approached us during the recruiting process and everything like that. And just to like go against them and like compete, it it, it means a lot. And he just he just lets us go out there and play. And Bryce, you, you mentioned wanting the assignment on Reeves, um, guarding him 94 feet, all that kind of stuff. When when did you kind of know that you were going to get that opportunity? And like, how long have you been thinking about getting back at him after what he was able to do uh, the other night? Well, I'm real competitive. And um, like I said, we was going back and forth the game before. And um, I think, Coach had Avery on him again today, but when I seen him coming out the tunnel and everybody booing, I asked, I asked Coach if I could guard him today. So right before the game, I asked. And then, you know, you just have to compete it. That's tough. This last one's for either one of you. Whenever you guys, at the beginning of the game, whenever you starters were out on the floor, um, Isaac likely he was in that huddle. Kind of what was he telling you guys right before the game started? Telling us keep our head together. Telling us, um. We we we're the we're the we're the greatest one of the greatest teams that in the country in our eyes one of the most competitive wherever it's that top to bottom and he was just saying keep our heads together um telling me to not show emotion and just stay together as a team when things break down and they'll go on the run just stay together bro we we make runs it's a game of runs so we can withstand whatever appreciate it guys yes sir next question comes from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoma go ahead Barry. Yeah, for both of you guys, how impressive how impressive is it to to win Bedlam twice in three days without Isaac, one of your best players, guy that can guard all kinds of people. You beat him twice without him. How impressive do you feel winning without it likely in these two games? Like like the same. It's basically the same response when what he said about Kate. I mean, like that just shows man, we got we got shooters. We got we got people that can step up. Obviously, like when Kate can step up, I can step up. He was stepped up against Texas Tech. I mean, we just we just got the pieces for people to step up and do big things. So the, really, like this isn't just for one man. So it's really like what they said, team. And we all do what we need to do as a team. And we're 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 selfish. We're, we're unselfish, and we care for one another. So when everyone got that hot hand, man, we just we just show the love. Bryce, what do you think about that? Uh, I just, what was the question again? My guy, my bad. Playing without, playing, winning twice in a row without Isaac. Um, um, it just shows how dangerous we are and how deep we are, like I said. Um, and I just I, I just feel like when he gets back, he he's really a coach. Every time out, he's talking before Coach Mike talks. Like, he's telling us what he sees. He's a player. He's a point guard. He also plays the five for us sometimes. So he, he knows every position. He knows every assignment, and he just—he just being a great leader that he is. Also, um, Bryce, you've uh, uh, hadn't been shooting that well, but uh, two games against Bedlam, particularly the second half Saturday, what got you going offensively, uh, and got your confidence back to be such an instrumental part of these two games? I just say, just just like I said, seeing that one go in, 
and before the games, my coach was telling me, let it fly, man, let it fly. It don't matter. It don't matter if you're making miss and just let it fly. The team's going to have to respect the doubt that I'm a three-point shooter. So just believe in myself. And um, I, I put every shot in God's hand. So I just give glory to God for it. Our next question comes from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Yeah, Bryce, I wanted to get back to your, your comments about being a complete team. How dangerous does that make this team, knowing that you guys can win in many different ways, having K score 40 points, or having you guys just win as, as a committee? Uh, I feel like it's hard to scout against us, you know? You can you, you can take K away, or you can take another player away, but the rest of us, it's, it's going to be hard to just stop the whole unit as a whole. We're not selfish at all. Like, we want the next player to hit this shot. We want the next player to get a stop. It's not like it's not about me. Maybe he doesn't care about what, what he does. As long as we win, it doesn't matter. It could be one zero. Uh, we, we're going to be happy that we won the game. And I guess this one this one be for Caleb. Uh, in the first half, Manning scored 16. You guys held him to four points in the second half. What worked for you guys defensively in that second half against Manning? Communication. Our communication wasn't the best in the first half. And honestly, I take a lot of responsibility on that. My communication towards my um, Teammates weren't the best on Manic and everything. So that means our rotations weren't on point. But in the second half, mentally, I just told myself that defense, defense, defense. So I just communicated with them. I tried to communicate with them better. Anytime Brady Manic had that ball across the the arc, I just said, run them off the line. If he takes a side step three, that's not, we did our job. So honestly, it was just communication. I appreciate you. Our next question is from Jacob Unruh from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Jacob. Yeah, I wanted to ask either one of you guys about the broom celebration at half court. Uh, kind of talk about that. And, um, I, I, I didn't know anybody had a broom. Yeah, I, 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 I would. I, Chris, Chris Lee told me, he said, I'm going to go get a broom. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm looking at the student section over there celebrating with them. I turn around, Chris just has a broom. And then I'm like, oh, OK. So then we just started dancing and stuff with yeah, it. Yeah, it's just, just having fun. Nothing, No disrespect, man. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I appreciate it, fellas. Sure. All right, fellas, that'll do it for questions. But before we let you guys go, maybe just first person accounts. What's the one thing that you want people to know about this team right now? Every player plays a part. Don't look off any player, you know. All of us, all of us help. I know Kay's the main man, you know, but he has a lot of soldiers behind him. And we we soldiers for him too, and he a soldier himself. We know and we don't back up for nobody at all. All competitive. Caleb? Uh, what he said, all I can think about, man, it's about to be a long week. <laughs> it's about to be a long week. <laughs> yeah, this, this is behind us. We won yeah. a game. I, I'm, the, I'm, I'm honestly just thinking about the week. Like, I'm, the better now. I'm literally packing, I'm packing a suitcase, like, a suitcase for like five days. Yeah. I haven't done that since I went to New York <laughs> last year. Yes, sir. You, you're pulling back on that AAU experience a little bit, too. So many games in so few days. Yes, sir. We thank y'all, though, for sure. We thank y'all. Thank y'all, man. Hey, congratulations to both of you guys on the win. Have a good rest of your night. Yes, sir. You don't want to do it. You want out? I You do? You really unlikely. So six wins now over ranked opponents. Eight wins, which leads the nation in quadrant one, uh, over quadrant one opponents. What what enables this team to do it? How do you how do you keep doing it over again, over and again? Uh, it's a bunch of fighters. I mean, I, I probably said that a hundred times, but that's that's what it is. It was, it was a it was a really weird game in many respects. At one point, I felt like we were down like fifteen, and then I looked up and we were up four. And <laughs> You know, but I, I guess that's kind of what you get when you put all the elements together. It's Bedlam. We we just played this game. Like, we literally just played this game. We played 45 minutes worth of it, you know, 56 hours ago. And, um, you know, both teams are good. Both teams made adjustments from Saturday to today. And it took a little while for us to figure out exactly what it was going to take to win. And we had to do it with stops and get out and transition tonight. Well, we'll just get to it because I know we're late here. So members of the media, if you have a question for Oklahoma State Coach Mike Boynton, please click raise hand, try and get to everybody. Our first question comes from Jacob Unruh from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Jacob. 
Mike, I want to start with Bryce tonight. Um, he had his second run of eight straight points. That was big, but I thought his defense on Austin uh, was especially impressive. What did you think of Bryce tonight? I thought it was really good. Um, Bryce has got a lot of pride. He's a really competitive dude. And, you know, Avery, Avery was a little banged up the other day, and, and Bryce asked yesterday for the matchup. And um, he did a pretty good job. Now, you know, Austin still – did Austin Reeves things. He, he scored a lot of points. He made a lot of plays for his team. I still can't believe he made that last shot that he made. I have no idea how, how he did it. Uh, it's like a horse shot that you don't take because there's no defense on the floor. Um, but uh, I thought Bryce was sensational on both ends of the court today. And you hear the crowd chanting one more year. How, how do you approach that with him? How do you have these discussions with him? I don't yet. Uh, I obviously gave him a little bit of a rib there about his choice the first time around because we recruited him. But that's the conversation for after the season. Um, all I want every year is for these guys to make good decisions. And, and that means what's best, what, 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 what are the goals we're trying to achieve and how do we get the information necessary to put ourselves in position to accomplish those. And that, that conversation won't happen probably for a, another few weeks. He said uh, the, the first shot he got to fall Saturday kind of woke him up offensively. Um, how, how streaky is he offensively? Uh, yeah, he's, he's pretty streaky. Um, but I, I, sometimes he over, he overthinks just the offensive game and he, he makes a more complicated play than he needs to make. Um, but that's the competitor to him. He thinks he can make plays that sometimes, you know, other people wouldn't think they can make. Uh, he's got a high level of confidence. Um, but when he's going, he's he's pretty important to us. And Caleb's night tonight. Caleb was was really good after you know he finished strong Saturday, but then was much better. That was adjustment you said you wanted to make. How did you think Caleb adjusted? I thought he did well. I thought he was really aggressive, both offensively and defensively. Uh, we actually were we got him engaged enough where we were able to switch him in some ball screens, which we don't do a lot. And he actually defended on the perimeter pretty good. You know, he had to chase Brady to the corner in some of our zone sets and he got there with some urgency and so you know again when he's dialed in his mind's in the right place on both ends of the court you know he's a guy that's got a chance to really really make a difference for our team but also be one of the better bigs in our league and what do you think of Cade uh, and how he adjusted to how you adjusted to him there was a lot of adjustments there and how do you think that kind of worked out for Cade and how he reacted I thought he was fun I thought he pressed a little bit early you know it was, again Senior day for a 19 year old freshman, obviously got to be weird. A um, lot of family here uh, coming off the game. They, they came out really, really aggressively. They were really physical. They were a little bit more aggressive in their ball screen coverages with them. And it took a little while for them to figure out where where to take advantage of that was. But I thought sec in the second half, he did a much better job. Thanks, Mike. Our next question comes from Marshall Scott from Pistols Firing. Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, Mike, it, it seemed like you played Keelan maybe at the five a little bit, maybe in his adjustment of those kind of handoffs. So what did you think of the job that he was able to do in a, in a new spot for him? Uh, I guess technically Cade would, would be the five in that lineup, but it's not really. I mean, we've got five guards out there, which is something we've done all year. Again, we talked about this since the beginning of the season. He just hasn't been a part of that as much here in the, in the second half of conference play um, just because the other guys have been playing better. You know, today Avery wasn't quite – as efficient, you know, he's dealing with a little bit of a uh, injured uh, back and a little bit of a rolled ankle. So Keelan gives us more length, rebounding, uh, and the ability to be able to switch, but also space the floor. And there was, there was one point where I think um, Rondell and Brady Manick both hit the ground after after a loose rebound. Just kind of what does this game, do you think, means for the, those Oklahoma kids? Um, you know, you obviously would have to ask them directly, but I, I would imagine two kids from this state grew up watching these games, they're basketball kids, and it means a lot for them to be able to play in this game. Um, you know, obviously this was Brady's last Bedlam matchup. You know, he didn't play particularly great on Saturday, but he came out really aggressively today. But I thought Rondell gave us a lot of energy and uh, made a lot of big plays for us. Um, I look forward to seeing him in this series a little bit more. They were they were bombing threes on you guys early. Um, that makes it tough to, to play his own. How beneficial would it have been to have ice there? I imagine he can 
guard those handoffs and you know if he, if he has reads on him it's not as big a deal if like they may has him yeah you know the thing about ice is he could guard reeves and he can guard manic right just his toughness his length could bother either one of them uh, so certainly we missed them but I, you know i'm proud of this team we won two really hard games without you know our established leader our most experienced guy i think it goes to show that we've gotten a lot better over the course of the season and you know, hopefully we can get him healthy and he can be a part of the, this last uh, last part of the season run for us. He he dressed tonight. It seemed. How close is he? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll be honest. He gave it a little bit of a go today and, and shoot around, but but didn't feel comfortable. And again, at the end of the day, I'm not going to put him out there too early or make sure we take our time and and get him healthy because just as as important it is, he plays for us. He's going to have a future in basketball that I don't want to. Um, I don't want to hinder that either. And then last thing for me, the, the guys talked about how, you know, Cade was struggling early, um, how, you know, this team isn't just Cade. That's kind of like the national outlook is that it's Cade and some other guys. Um, what can you say about about the rest of the guys stepping up and, and kind of picking up the scoring in, in Cade's absence there early on? Well, you know, Cade's our best player, and I think he's the best player in the country. <laughs> um, but we've got some other guys who are capable of helping us win. And, you know, the, the, the beauty of Kate is he allows, he doesn't make it about himself. You know, he, he makes the right play. You know, when he's double teaming ball screens, he'll give it up and allow somebody else to go, you know, create offense. So it's a credit to all these guys for believing in each other. Because uh, again, Kate's one of our most vocal guys on the bench, giving guys confidence to go make plays when he gives it up out of double team. Appreciate it, Coach. Our next question comes from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, Mike, uh, two straight games against OU. Uh, they led more than you led, uh, more so Saturday than tonight, but still, I think it was 21 to 14 in minutes led. And yet down the stretch, you guys make the plays to take the lead and, and and win it. Does that give you a lot of security as a coach, knowing that even when things aren't going great and you're behind, your your guys sort of hold on to the rope, and don't let go, and keep it close? and able to take control yeah that, that, that's a learned skill uh, something you have to practice uh, in, in these games would have been harder for us to win early in the year because these guys hadn't been through college basketball and now they're getting used to being in these moments and, and playing those four minute games and taking it segment for segment not getting overwhelmed by any part of the game and like i said my opening there was a point i felt like we were down 15. i mean they played really, really well. Uh, but I also think that over the course of the game, our length and our athleticism, those threes weren't falling quite as much late um, because they got contested. And, you know, they kept shooting them. They shot 34 of them. Uh, we shot 14, which is you know, about how we want to play. Next question comes from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Mike, how reassuring is it to know that you guys can win, not just, you know, when, when K doesn't score 40 points, but in the different ways that you win. Today, it's, it's Caleb Boone scoring 17. The next game, Rondell Walker might be hot. Um, how dangerous does that make you knowing that anybody can be that guy for you guys on any given night? Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of pieces. That's kind of what I told the crowd today. I, re I remember um, my first year here and, and winning – a game 94 to 90 like we did on Saturday or finding a way to win this game 79 to 75 wasn't really an option. Uh, we just didn't have enough playmaking guys to score like that. So defense had to be what we hung our hat on. Well, now we've combined that. We play pretty solid defense still, um, but we've got more offensive weaponry that gives us a chance on a night to night basis to have different guys be the guy to carry the load. Tonight it was Caleb. Uh, there's been games where it's been M.A., there's been games where it's been Rondell, there's been games where it's been Bryce, and, and obviously we all know what Kate's capable of when he's on. So uh, I think we're one of the more versatile and deep teams in the country, and I look forward to seeing these guys continue to play. Now, we, we talked about Caleb a little bit in the last game, but just how exciting is it to see a local kid like him uh, have the big play down the stretch last game and then have the game he did today in, in a Bedlam rivalry? It's huge. You know, again, I, I can't – can't discount his brother. I think his brother's minutes were really, really huge for us. You know, he, he played almost 25 minutes, probably the most he's played since, you know, non-conference really. 
Uh, even though he played last Monday, it wasn't this much, and he gave us a big spark. But Caleb certainly was the guy that we were able to play through, and he was really aggressive on both ends of the court. My last, uh, going back to the, the Texas Tech game, all the way into you know the, the, the two future games you guys got coming up, real rough stretch for you guys. Um, do you worry about an, uh, an emotional tax um, during this stretch at all? It's March. <laughs> You know, we're playing relevant, meaningful basketball games. I don't worry about that. What I worry about is keeping our guys in the moment, focusing on not the challenge, not why we, why do we have to go play these two games? You know, why do we get the short end of the stick? No, we have an opportunity to go play one of the best teams in the country. On Thursday on the road, I think we played okay on the road for the most part. And I look forward to seeing our guys get prepared to go up there and play a team that's going to be well prepared and it's going to give us you know, a great challenge. Appreciate you, Mike. And our final question is going to come from Marshall Scott from Pistols Firing. Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, Mike, this is just a quick nerdy basketball question, but you broke out a 1-3-1 there for a few possessions. How practiced were you guys in that? It seemed like the first time you guys have done it this year, I think. Yeah, I didn't really want to play it. This game means a lot, though. So I wasn't going to hold anything back. We're out the orange blazer, the 1-3-1. I didn't quite get the floor slap because I think last week I almost got a technical, but I was close to even there. Uh, I know how much this game means and I was gonna make sure we did everything we could to put ourselves in position. It was good for a possession. I think it kind of threw them off rhythm. Uh, then they got three, we got out of it. But it, it's something we, we, it's something like, you know, it's kind of like your trick plays in football. Like you practice them like barely, but guys aren't totally unfamiliar with it. You know, you're not gonna play it for a half but a couple of possessions, you might steal, you know, a turnover or a missed shot and, and, and a game like this could be the difference. Appreciate it. Coach, you referenced the Orange Blazer. What does that mean to you? Um, you know, it's an old to Coach Bucky um, in, 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 a, in a way to honor him and, and what this rivalry means. Uh, I know it's uh, something that our fans appreciate and, you know, it's a tip of the cap to our fans because I can't imagine that there were five better environments in college basketball than Gallagher Iowa this year during COVID. And save for COVID, they would have needed the fire marshals in here tonight. <laughs> and people would have been hanging off the rafters. And so I wanted to thank the people who did come, but also acknowledge, you know, the people who weren't able to make it by having them be able to watch the game on TV with a lot of pride. Well, that'll do it for questions, but kind of as always, want to give you the final word. What's you know what's most important to you? Maybe something that we didn't cover. No, I just just again, just thanks to our fans. It, it was a sensational um, season. We're not done yet. You know, we think we got a lot more basketball to, ahead of us, and I'm excited about getting back to work with these guys and trying to see if I can help them get a little bit better tomorrow. Coach, thank you so much. Congratulations on the win. We always appreciate your time and your insight. Thank you, members of the media. We thank you as well.